Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are going to go for the second part of the ongoing series or section 2 of the Razor Pages with Entity Framework Core in ASP.NET Core with the Contoso University web app that we have been um, constructing, building so far and we are going to handle the concurrency conflicts. Now this part shows when multiple users update the entity concurrently, how will the ensuing um, conflicts to be handled. Now for this, the brevity of this tutorial, this part is also divided into three sections and today we are going to take the first, second section of part 8. In the first section we have seen the um, concept of concurrency conflicts and handling concurrency. So if you have yet to see that part, please go through that part or uh, section 1 of part 8 and then come to this uh, section 2. So here we are going to show how to scaffold the department model and update the edit page. So we will hit straight to the Visual Studio. I have created the departments folder already and right click the departments folder and add new scaffolded item. This is the following the same procedure as we did in the first uh, part where we have scaffolded the students model. So students model here has been departed, uh, replaced by the departments model and click on the default and add. Here the difference being that I will have to select the department model and click on add and instead of Contos University which is highlighted I will just make it school. So in essence it will be school context Contos University dot models dot school context and click on add. Okay. So here we have got within the departments we have got create, delete, details, edit and index. I will have to pick up the uh, index.cshtml, index razor page and I have copied the code in my clipboard and I will change, I will highlight everything and then paste the code from my clipboard. All right. Now, um, here the scaffolding engine created a row version column for the index page, but that shouldn't be displayed. So the last byte of the row version is displayed in this tutorial to help understand the concurrency. The last byte isn't guaranteed to be unique, right? Here and uh, replaces the first mid name with full name. That is the full name. It is earlier first mid name. Okay. So next is I already update the edit page model. So here we see to detect a concurrency issue, the original value is updated with the row version value from the entity it was fetched. So if you go back to the edit.cshtml.cs file, department.row version here, and here the update the row version to the value when this entity was fetched okay if the entity has been updated after it was fetched row version would match the db row version and db update concurrency exception is thrown a second post back will make them match unless a new concurrency issue happens okay so that's what it did in this slide now in the preceding code department dot row version is the value when the entity was fetched Original value is the value in that database when the first or default async was called on the got on get async method. Okay, so on get async method was this. 
here I have to make this change again. So Contoso University dot it has to be again Contoso University dot models namespace. So I will which is already there Contoso University of mod dot models following my earlier uh, course lectures on this subject. So I will get rid of um, the Contoso University dot data. Is the correct one is Contoso University dot models and uh, it is now getting the school context from that namespace. Right. And what we have just talked is like uh, var client values equals uh, cost to department exception entity dot entity and var db values department cost to department database entity dot to object. Okay, so that's this part client value and department value this db values. So um, now it gets the client values, the values posted to this method and the database values. The method set db error message code adds a custom error message for the each column that has db values different from that was posted to on post async. So that's set db error message that's what this method is doing what this method is doing again this method all of these snippets of code they are adding custom error message for each column that has database values different from that was posted to on post async now the this code the following highlighted code sets the row version value to the new value retrieved from the database. So that's the department dot row version there. So this part of code. So it sets the row version value to the new value retrieved from the database. Okay. The next time the user clicks save, only concurrency errors that happen since the last display of the edit page will be caught. Finally, this code model state dot remove now must clear the model error for the next post back. The model state dot remove statement is required because the model state has the old row version value. In the razor page, the model state value for a field takes precedence over the model property value when both are present. So model state value has got the first preference, so that will actually um, suppress the model property value when both the things are present. Now we'll have to update the edit page edit markup page so edit.cshtml and the code is I'll just copy the entire thing and paste it from the code on my keyboard. And here in this preceding marker, it updates the page directive from at page to at page ID in it. So if you recall, what this means is that you know it should be able to put up a URL on the browser like you know um, in localhost colon port slash 
department slash um, index or slash edit slash two or three whatever the ID. Now adds a it also adds a hidden row version. This is the input type hidden is before department dot row version. So row version must be added so postback binds the value but you don't want the value to be shown that's why it is a hidden field. So it also displays the last byte of the row version for debugging purposes. So it displays the last byte of the row version here and replaces the view data with a strongly typed instructor name SL. So here that is the strongly typed instructor name SL instead of the view data and that's all for today. Um, thanks for watching. If you like my video please put your comments and feedbacks and likes and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.